Hey y'all, thank y'all for showing interest in the video. If you like it, please like and subscribe. Have a great rest of the day. Because basically what you're doing is, is you're getting the material here and wheeling it down there. So I've got, uh, I'll, get, I'll start, start to set for you. Something like that. behind the curtain. So when a sheep is shorn, that is it gets a haircut, it comes off looking something like this. Okay. Uh, I don't actually know what breed of sheep this came from. This was a gift to me and the person who gave it to me did not know. So, but it's wool and it's, it's wool. lovely. You can see, I don't know how close up you can get, but you can see there's lovely what's called crimp here where it's nice and wavy. Uh, you typically want that. It gives it nice like luster and bounce and things like that. Okay. So, once you've shorn your sheep and this has been washed, so it's not greasy, you can take your cards and essentially brush the hair out because trying to spin it like this. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really do anything. So you have to open it up and get these knots out essentially and get all of the hairs to line up kind of nicely. So I've laid it on one, I've got a second one, and I'm brushing back and forth. I'm not interlocking my teeth and scraping, I'm just gently letting it brush across the top. And then switching hands. There's a couple different ways you can do that. Some people will not switch hands, they'll just keep at it for a while. For a while. I like to switch hands. And you do this until you think it's good enough. Okay. But so you could see it went from looking like this to now it looks like this. So all the it's brushed out and the hairs are aligned. So now I'm going to take this and turn it into something called a roll log. Which is to say I'm going to take this little rectangle of fiber and I'm going to roll it into a nice little cigar. Works for me. Hmm. And I'll take along the back and just roll it up because it's a tube of fiber essentially, nice and airy and light. Do you typically, I mean, is it typical or is it accurate to say that they dye wool or not really? Uh, so that's where you get the term dyed in the wool is you can dye at any step of the process really. Some people will dye it as the locks. Uh, Colonial Williamsburg does that because they raise a breed of sheep called Lester Longwool. Okay. And uh, that, that hmm. their hair is like so silky that it takes dye better just as the, what's called the lock. Um, so you can do it right after it's shorn and washed. Uh, you can do it after you've turned it into uh, probably not the roll legs, but a form called uh, roving, which is just a different form of, of <laughs> making the fiber. Um, you can dye it after you knit uh, or spun it into yarn and then you can dye it after you've knit or woven or turned it into the final product. So like these were dyed after they were already made. Um, they're from Gisela. So she did something I think she said this is turmeric and walnut. Um, but you can see here I have yarn that I dyed after it's already yarn. So once I've got my roll log my big wheel or my great wheel and we're going to spin it. I don't already have a set up. So I've got my yarn that's already on there. I want to get it wound up a little bit more so I'm closer to the wheel. And this is what's I'm going to take my roll on and my already spun yarn. I'm going to pinch the two together and give it a little bit of twist to get it to lock together. They are nice and joined. And so what's happening is when I turn the big wheel here, it has a drive fan that connects to this part called the spindle. The spin as the spindle turns, you can see that the yarn sort of flicks off the tip. When it does that, it's twisting the yarn up. That twist will move up the yarn and go into my fiber supply. And what I'm doing is a delicate dance of moving my hand with the fiber back in time with the twist moving up so that as the twist is moving up, it's grabbing a little bit of that fiber 
I'm pulling it out. And if I twist with my fingers, you can see what is fluffy becomes a yarn. Okay. So I get it started. This stuff's a little dry. So as I said, I'm having to do kind of some stop and starting. Normally I'm not sitting here and... Now here's a dumb question. Dumb question for you. How do you make it undry? So I could add fat to it, um, which is called spinning the grease. And that's typically what you would do is that you would, after you've washed your yarn, uh, the, uh, I was reading in the, I can't remember the name of it because I just discovered it, but it's the oldest dye manual in America. So dyeing stuff from 1798. And they talk about, they would use hog fat or soft fat and they would do a ratio of seven pounds to wool to one pound of that fat and they would mix it all together so that it becomes one one essentially and it becomes allows it to draft a little bit smoothly this has been living in a bag for who knows how long a short bit <laughs> yeah so it's not drafting very well as you can see drafting is the act of that pulling out some of the fibers and letting the twist move in okay. which is what actually locks it together and turns it into yarn but now once it turns where does it go so once it turns i have to manually wind it on so i'm just gonna thin this out because again i'm not liking how it's what's called slubby is the actual technical term i'm hmm. gonna add some more twist because the twist is the thing that binds it all together keeps it together Okay, now what's this wheel called? I know that there's so a term is, for it. There's a couple different terms. So it would be called a great wheel or a walking wheel. Uh, I think of it in my mind as a big wheel and another term is a muckle wheel. Um, but great wheel is probably the, the most common term Okay. Uh, you would see. Okay, that's so cool. Adding more twist. And so now, as you can see, I'm kind of all the way back. I can't really go too much further. I can't reach my wheel. So now I need to wind it on. So I'm going to turn my wheel opposite of the way I was a little bit and see how it's now going to where I've got that bump of yarn. Right down there. Uh-huh. And then I wind it on as I walk forward. And then at some point you notice that I went from a 90 degree angle to about a 45 degree angle to wound it to wind off to the tip. And then now I can keep going. Again, if my wool will behave. Well, it seems like a very, very skilled process. <laughs> it takes some practice. Um, I would not say that I am an expert in it by any means. As you can see, you have the whole... Better than I am. <laughs> well, again, it's just saying you gotta, gotta give it a try. Okay, well, thank you very much. Yeah.